Good morning. So we're getting ready to walk down to the lower garden and Larry and Joy are with me today and we're going to um, talk about the evolution of the rail boxes. In the meantime, you can see the walk down the mountain. And this trail used to be just a foot, well, a foot wide. And there's so much woods between our house and the house where Peetzee lives, you couldn't see the house. And, and the, the trees and little brush was above your head and you could, but you could walk through this winding trail. So once we started clearing this, then we made this into a, a four wheeler trail. And actually it was started by the young boy next door had a four wheeler and we had to tell him not to come down through here because he was causing an erosion problem. Mm -hmm. And you can see all these sticks to the right here. Okay, let me, let me do that. Also, I noticed that the water trends to go down the mountain along well, this path. Well, yes. And so yeah. we asked him to, uh, we found a place where he could reach these trails and this, this 100 acres back here from a different point. And so we filled in this, this uh, pat, rutted path with, started putting sticks here. And it became a, a feature. And um, It's kind of like a berm to divert the, well, that's right. the water and the erosion. That's brilliant. Okay. I'm allowed to compliment you, Larry. <laughs> sure. Well, and you know, we had an inch and a half rain last night. It was not forecast. Oh. And so I painted the deck up there. Yeah. I always look at the forecast. Yeah. Because I had to redo part of the deck because oh. I, it got rained off. But anyway, so erosion here. So this, this is a new, er see, you can look here. There's, you know, when you come out in the morning, you see what a storm, what damage mm -hmm. has taken place. And of course, uh, and damage, here we have where a bear has rooted through the leaf pile. You see all those little, uh, he's rooting, he's looking for grubs and food. Oh my goodness, look at that. Those are huge oh, yeah, holes. All the, way, all the way around. Ah. So, so animals create um, issues for erosion where water can yeah, I see. It's washed away all the all the mulch along right. here, all the, the wood chips. And we we got this this when the neighbor moved next door, Ted. Uh, he he gave us this little thing, and he, they had uh, his wife had glued in all these uh, different colored glass beads. Mm -hmm. Well, they came off, and they they kind of fell over here. Oh my goodness! Well, and so so this morning. We've got another bag of glass beads, or or a, or a little a little uh, container, mm -hmm. and we we decided this morning, looking at this, this is an erosion issue here because it's not it's not grass. Grass will slow down water. This is this, all mulch. This is all moss. And Joy was out here bending over yesterday. She spends hours weeding up here. Oh, Otherwise, it would be all wouldn't be pretty like this. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh. And so the water collects here and sh comes down this chute. So even though before I, th these glass beads, I've had to, th they'll wash down into this uh, bigger part of the path. So this morning though, it's, Joy said just leave them there and they're kind of pretty. And the, and the rain clean them off. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put some more here. Oh, great fun. So we have... Um of silky posing by the tree. You know, I just love the moss on the trees. Well, yeah, these two trees are awesome. Actually, you can see this bare spot here. Uh-huh. And there was a, a big slug about that long a couple years ago, but he had been working this, eating this uh, moss away. So that's why that bare spot is there. Oh, for heaven's sakes. But yeah, these two trees, I had... The way they're close together, I had thought about putting a board up there and putting a rope swing on it. Oh, it'd be perfect, wouldn't it? Well, it would. And it would swing out over here. Uh, and I still may do that. You know, uh, even adults still like to swing. In certain countries, they have swing competitions. Oh. So are, are these called like pole trees? Well, the, these are... They're very, very straight. They're tulip poplars. Yeah. Because they grew in the woods. Now, if they were out in an open field, this is true of all trees, it would have had branches. It would, it's configuration. Yes. But because the, the branches have sheared off, 
these are probably 130 plus feet high yeah at least but when i look around my garden i look for places where i can uh, attach things and over here of course i have my my uh, unfinished tree house but uh, the kids lost interest in so I, I lost my motivation but yeah I, I ran a board between these two trees years ago oh i see there and put uh, there's a, a swing with a uh, the kind i don't like it's not a straight board but it's it's you know when we were young they had uh, boards uh -huh. and you could jump off of them right and of course for safety reasons they went to these these ones that look like a sling, they grab your butt. You can't, right. you can't really jump, you can't out, jump of out of them. No. Right. And you can't stand on them. No, you I can't. I mean, we used to stand on the boards and pump. Yeah, we did. Isn't that interesting? The reason I asked about if these were considered pole trees, I will think of the name of the garden that I visited. I think it was in Charlotte or someplace on the East Coast. An heiress, it was her home. and. When we went through the gardens that her family had established, right. the docent that was taking us around was had a very haughty attitude about what you called pole trees. They, they were very, very straight. And um, she was disparaging for some reason right. or other, didn't think they were pretty. Well, our, our um, poplar trees grow extremely straight. They'd be great for making boards and things. I'd, well, in they, furniture. In furniture. They were harvested by... Uh, what was the king um, 16th of France for well, making that beautiful furniture, blonde furniture? When, when. Uh, oh, look at the look at the water erosion from the rain last night. Right. Look at that. And so I'll have to come back with a a, a garden rake and pull stuff back into that ditch because yeah. if you let it go, it's just going to get deeper. Now you smell that smell. Yes. What's that smell from? Oh. Who? No, I, I'm sorry. Carrion. It's a. It's a from dead death. Oh, so we have a dead animal around well, here yeah, somewhere. Oh yeah, and it's gotta be a big dead animal. It could be. A, well, it could be a, a. It could be a possum, a raccoon, could be a deer. And uh, years ago, uh, we smelled that up at your place, and uh -huh. Fran and I walked around the woods uh, looking for the body, and never found it. I mean, you know. Years ago, on our front porch, we had a bad odor, and I told you something dead was underneath. Yeah, that and we, you went underneath, and you brought out this raccoon that was like this. Yeah, yeah. it was a huge dead raccoon. Any sign of injury? Well, no, you couldn't tell. By he that. just died. No, well, well, they can... been dead for quite a while. Oh God! Yeah, and the stench. Oh. No, we could find that one, but to find a dead animal in this brush. Yesterday, I walked down. Um, behind our flower beds here and you'd have to you'd have to do concentric circles oh yeah it's fine yeah and um, keep track of it well let's move moving on this morning uh, here's Larry, some, is this a pile of uh, those are those are mushrooms yeah where'd they come from well they just grew overnight with water I've never seen the brown ones like that really? I've seen white and yellow. Because we've had rain this week, honey. They, oh. they just popped up. Do you know that they're the wire, they, they are the wired part of the planet. Their roots extend over the entire planet and they're, they, they connect up with each other and they communicate over the entire earth. I sat through a two hour lecture by a person who was an expert on, on fungi. It was incredible. Oh, you brought a you brought a chair down here, Larry. Well, this you is a, this, it. this chair was up at your house. Oh, it had rotted out. Oh, you've repaired it. Look at it; it's beautiful. Well, I repaired this last summer. It took me, I don't know, over a couple of weeks. It was just because the the wood was a little thicker. Yes. I had to sand down the edge oh. to get it into the. Uh, I mean, it took me a long time to get it into. Yeah, the Yeah, I had to make this frame. Because it wasn't straight. Oh, that was a lot of work. Well, a lot of yeah, a lot of work, and. Uh, but Larry, so worthwhile. Thank you. Well, I know, but because it's it's not it, it wiggles. Oh. Uh, so I decided not to take it back to your house because if guests sat on it, it might, you know. Come apart. Well, it could. And somebody could get hurt. So I kept it down here. Oh, you know that's the reason why my little love seat, my wicker love seat, somebody heavy sat on it and broke it. Is that what caused it to... I didn't... I, I think so. I don't know that. I didn't witness it. 
but I think that must be what happened. You know, it's 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 wicker. It's not all that. Um, Come this way. You know, hardy. Well, I have. These are three baby angel trumpets. <gasps> oh. Well, I I grew them last year. Uh. I, and they sat out here behind my house, and I never got around to planting them. I mean, I, I would look at them and say, well, I'll give me a blah, blah, blah. I never got around to planting them. And uh, I can show you, I have a, an angel trumpet out here that's got flowers on it. But now you did put it in the greenhouse over the winter. Oh, yes, Because yes. it's a tropical plant. Yeah, come this it way. It wouldn't survive outside. And, of course, we've got uh, the... Uh, this bed of uh, lily of the valley. I know what's going on with it. Yeah, the, well, the flowers come early spring. It's yeah, just, it's kind of dying down, like balls usually do. Um, but here we've got the mother plant of the angel trumpet, and I put it here so we can see it. I mean, we have seen them at the arboretum. But they have these big blossoms. I mean, they're huge. They come in yellow and white. And on the internet, you can find all kinds of crazy colors. But I think that, you know they, they they are messing with them. But uh, this is the mother plant, and it actually uh, one year it grow up, it'll grow up. I think it was 15 to 18 feet high and got huge. And the thing is, it doesn't just bloom once a year. You know, you think you're, it keeps on blooming, doesn't well, it? Well, it, it's 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 a tropical plant. Yeah. And so, uh, but we actually had six flushes oh, of blooms. Oh, six. And at the end, before I put it back in the greenhouse, I had to to cut it way down. I mean, I took five or six feet or more, cut it off the top. I can see it. the cut marks. Look at that. Well, those, uh, I even yeah, it's that's from uh, a previous year. Um, Oh, and then up about 18 inches is the next cut. I can see. Well, yeah, there's a c cut to the side here. Yeah. So, uh, and it, it was growing in the greenhouse over winter. Uh, but there were 42 blossoms oh. at the oh. end of the season. It was end of October uh -huh. before I put it in the greenhouse. I mean, all at once. At one time. Yeah, at one, one time. Two of those things. Oh. It was gorgeous. So, uh, you know, I put these... I put these up the road. I know you did. Now I put one in a pot um, the previous year down front, and I, I moved that in the greenhouse. But I, I the, the pot got destroyed trying trying to get the thing out. Yeah. Um, so I, I decided to put it in the ground, and uh, and of course it died over winter. I, oh, I, it was yeah. too too much to dig it out. I mean it was had anyway. So I have some big pot. I have one or two big pots. Well, the problem is I've gotten old and I can't lift these big pots. Oh. I mean, I use hand truck. I can get them in the greenhouse, but some of them are. are yeah. Difficult. Okay. You know, because I'm sinking pots in the ground inside of a pot, so it's easy to pull them out. Oh, yeah. oh my God! Look at your Cleomies. Look at those. They're like four feet tall, or yeah, more. Those, those came. Those were volunteers. They came up from previous years. They're like weeds, but they're pretty weeds. Oh my God, they're gorgeous. <gasps> and the bees are already visiting. <sighs> okay, Joe, you gave me some Cleome seeds that I never got started or planted. Oh, I, know, I know, And I need, to, I need to know where to plant them in the garden where they'll do well. Well, they'll grow just about anywhere. But you know, down here, I just moved this yesterday. This is uh, a, a pot of... Uh, um, impatience yep. I kept from last year from yeah. the greenhouse uh -huh. and uh, I mean it's a pretty good sized plant and uh, I put, had them over here it, they were they were back in but they got covered up by uh, Cleomies and uh, the four o'clocks uh -huh. and so yesterday I, I I pulled it out so I could see it so that that's a useful part of uh, using pots because you can move them around and you also have some oil boxes in here. Well, yeah, th this, the history of this bank, when we first moved here, you can come over here. It was, it covered in creeping, uh, creeping, uh, <laughs> what is it? Creeping, what is this plant here? Is it juniper? 
creeping juniper. They had planted creeping juniper on it. Well, that's a good bank plant to plant, Larry. Yeah. And so uh, that was pretty boring. <laughs> we and like so it. one of the first things that we planted up here, uh, we we bought some uh, expensive uh, rare rare irises. Bearded irises. Bearded irises. Uh. And um, and I, I got rocks and I dug in, but to create kind of a, a ledge. Uh huh. And so we had bearded irises across here. Oh, it and, must have been uh, beautiful. Well, it was beautiful. But then through the years, I don't know, we've tried different things. The ground is basically clay. Yes, yes. And so uh, we were going to talk about rail boxes today, the evolution. So eventually, uh, one spring, I'd kept these rail boxes in, the, in over winter in the greenhouse. And so I, I dug out places for were a flat places, mm -hmm. and so I could put uh, these rail boxes up here and add color and interest. I mean, there's a there's a fifth one. One, two, three, four, five. You have five or six because you have one over here. Oh well, yeah. Well, then I added those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I added so rail boxes. Um, they're 24 inches long and 12 inches wide. Yeah, this is nicotina or four o'clock. Now they, you know, the Europeans had uh, flower clocks where they had different, uh, they figured out which flowers opened at certain times during the day. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh yeah, it's cool. Oh. Now I haven't gotten into that, but I, I heard about that probably 40, 45 years ago. It's about um, a man that was teaching about total health. But he talked about uh, plants and circadian rhythms. Ah. You know, plants are very much into that because oh, of yes. moon cycles and length of day, all of that. Oh, I didn't know that. I did not know that about forklifts. You have some white ones up along the road. Well, yeah, these are they, down, down at the mailbox. Um, I've seen this, this color and orangey and, and yellow yeah, and white. Yeah, yeah. Oh. And they will colors. take over. I mean, you got to pull them out. Well, but that's okay. We, sure. we we live in a moderate rainforest, which means we get an average of 54 inches of rain a year. And we've learned that the time to pull weeds is the day after a rainstorm. They come up really easy, even when the roots are anywhere from 6 to 10 inches deep. When I pulled up the money plant, there were roots on those plants, and that's from one year's growth, that were... 14 inches long and they came up really easy same thing's true for the um well, the uh, japanese anemones they pull easy well the four o'clocks the first time i realized that they were i had had put a bucket of i don't know what i i, I said put it in the in the greenhouse in the in like no before never ever and it stayed there all all winter but then when i brought it out I don't know whether I emptied it, but I, I found a big long root. It looked like a like a carrot. Yeah. And um, and then I realized that these, you know, the four clocks, uh, they die back in the fall, but that root survives winter. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, the biggest root I've found is about that big, uh, big around, like that, really but, large. So. Okay. Anyway, and when, and they're in that form, they can be stored or moved. Yes. Well, let's. Do you let's, see the bear's britches? Bear's britches? I can nod them or something. Do you see it? The white, white pokey thing with the. Oh. Yeah, this is the mother plant over here. And we've had. It's had. We've had three, three stalks. Yeah, three stalks, but it this hasn't year put up. It didn't do it. It hadn't put anything up this year. But this is called what? Bear? Bear bears britches. Huh. That's an odd name, isn't it? Well, well what's this? Well, Ouch! Yeah, it hurts. Whoa! It hurts. Right? Look at the look at this the the It's pokey. Oh my god! Those are really, 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 really sharp. Yep. Well, but that's an interesting stalk on that plant, isn't it? Well the man the, the man that uh, the part the half owner of the uh, Blue Ridge A Lily Farm. Yes. He he has some of these, but he says he he made a comment 
that he doesn't like plants that have stickers. Yeah, of course. But but because of this flower, he has them. Well, that's pretty outstanding. I don't know if there's any gloves in the world that are thick enough to allow for you to come anywhere near that. Well, yeah, these these babies, they spread over here. Uh-huh. These have probably been two-year-old babies. And I actually moved some up to the uh, the bed up along the road, which we call uh, the money trail. Oh, money trail, okay. So there's two of these up there. Now, they haven't gotten big enough to bloom, but uh, I'm hopeful. Well, that's a very interesting foliage. Well, yes, it's... Uh, <laughs> two varieties of the bear's britches. Two varieties? And I had the wrong variety. I had it for years and years. And when we went to the Blue Ridge Daylily, the guy said these do better in Western North Carolina than oh. the ones I had. Okay. So, so you found I, some. I found one. Okay. Planted it. Well, you've got like six or eight plants off of it now. Mm, yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's great. Oh, okay, they're, Larry. They're interesting. So where are we going next, Larry? Going to the back deck. This is where the, the rail boxes first started. Okay, now, let's not walk through the garage. It's ugly as I'll get out. <laughs> well, on the right here is a money plant that has dried up. Yeah. It, has, it, it blooms early in the spring, has purple flowers. They also come in white. We had some white in mine. Right, but the, the you know, the, the, the uh, and some Australian people came by and uh, last week and they came around and they have them in Australia, but they have a different name. I don't remember what it was, but. Uh, well, it looks like Chinese money well, from know, the old days, really old, old days. And of course my uh, 36 year old four wheeler still running. Mm. Now let's look at the rail boxes from the outside. Okay. Uh, we've got a back deck up here. And um, I had to replace that sometime after we moved here. It, it used to come out, there's a post here, hidden under here. Oh, I see it. It, it used to, well, be skinnier than that deck. Ah. Oh. And came to this point, it had steps. Uh-huh but they had never attached it to the house. Oh. So it separated, plus it rotted. So I had to replace it. And uh, for a while, <laughs> we I'd put the sliding glass doors, but for a while there was, uh, and so when I had to wash, and I hadn't replaced the deck, and uh, I had to stand up, there's a little ledge on the outside, I'd stand on this little like four inch ledge mm -hmm. and hold on to wash the windows of the outside uh, sliding glass doors. So it probably separated and fell over. Well, yeah, we had to take it apart. Yeah, okay. All right, so, all right, go. I'm following you. We're gonna go inside. Uh, we're gonna look at the rail boxes from inside. Right. That's the cat dog door that the raccoons came in the house wandered around so originally oh here we have another five years cat ago, i bought my first rail box i don't know if i bought two or three at that time they're about uh 16 dollars with tax yeah you've got one of these plants BC. yeah it's rex begonia right it, it it we put it inside yes and it just the leaves just died during the winter it needs it needs grow light well, i did i got light but i you know yeah i know so it, it uh, anyway, so over the years, uh, I got rail boxes, and of course, they were great. They're very efficient to store in a greenhouse because, mm -hmm. and they're rectangular, and they don't waste space like a round pot. Yes, you're exactly right. And um, so, eventually, I kept adding them. You know, they cost twenty bucks now, so that's inflation. But I kept, I kept adding them. And at one point, uh, before last year, I had 12 on this back rail system. So you pretty much solid rail boxes all well, the way was, around. Was, I remember. Uh, yeah, just a couple inches apart. Yeah, it was great. But then I, I, uh, I started moving these boxes other places because they're like big planters. You know, when you go to a nursery and buy something with multiple kinds of plants, 
you know, I often have coleus, wandering Jew, uh, New Guinean patients. Uh, I've got I've got ferns here, ferns, yes, uh, begonias, um, and of course different kinds of uh, coleus. And uh, so, so the wandering Jew kind of took over this 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 box. But one of the first hanging plants that we got when we lived in Georgia mm -hmm. uh, was just a hanging pot of wandering Jew. Mm -hmm. We thought that was awesome. I mean, the way it draped over. And so, um, and now I have some of the, like this was this this New Guinea was from last year. I've added a white one here. Just within the last couple of weeks, I had to, I had some left over. I had to get rid of. So, um, yeah. And there's one on the outside. They're 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 starving for light. Yeah, New Guineas need sunlight. Well, they they do. Whereas regular impatience can do all right. right with dappled or maybe an hour or two of sun. So anyway, when we took when we reduced the number of boxes that we had back here and had more space between them, we decided we really liked that. Oh, okay. You know, it's it's interesting to have them all jammed together, but to spread them out mm -hmm. ma makes each one uh, individualistic. And you can also see your garden outside here well, in front of the well, woods. Well, that's right. Um, now these are Christmas Christmas uh, cacti, and uh, the reason they're out here, they, we had some like three or four in our bathroom in the hallway up on ledges and they did great but then well that's because they had the um the skylight skylight but then one day one of them was gotten so heavy i mean it just had a little pot i don't know which one it was but anyway it it fell off the ledge and made a big mess <laughs> oh gee <laughs> had a lot of uh, it survived so looks it looks like it might be the one at the end. Yeah, it could be the one at the end. That's a small pot for a such a big plant. Right, small pot. So, so, and these were, a lot of these were inside on a, on a, a rack. Actually, I think it was this one over here. This, okay. This, this pot was up in the corner. All right, so I will volunteer to come and help repot all these, because you know I've got a bunch of big, bigger pots. And we can um, we can repot some of these. A lot of new growth, Larry. It's they're quite well, yeah, doing well, quite well oh, out yeah. here. Oh yeah. Well, we have a big one down there that we've had I don't know 20, 30 years, and it keeps. Uh... Oh my God! It's about two and a half, three feet yeah. wide. Right, right, right. That's that's the one down there. It, it goes inside downstairs in the winter. It does fine. It blooms even <laughs> though it's inside. Oh. Okay, are we done in this area? I need to walk back through the house? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm trying not to move too well, fast. I noted the last time or two that I'm... Well, we, and we used to keep year-round the... Uh, and the, these uh, Christmas cactus were on this baker's rack. Yeah. Um, well, since, since one had, had fallen out of... Uh, fallen off and I took most of them out of the bathroom there's one left okay but it's in a place where it won't fall yeah you know close the door you've well, had bears on your on your deck yeah, deck yeah, that's yeah. two stories that's two stories and a bear came up well, they, they were on the front porch too they they uh they suck the uh hummingbird sugar out oh my god and they uh we used, we used to have bird feeders that we kept f filled, but because we had so many creatures, a problem. We we stopped doing that. Yeah, I understand. You know, I thought it was bears initially that were emptying my bird feeders, hummingbird feeders, until I put up that camera and saw the raccoons were standing on their hind legs, grasping it with both of their front paws and drinking it just like a guy in a bar. You oh, know, I know. It's just incredible. Okay. So I've got to pull out the money plant. We'll get that at some point. But the um, Swedish ivy. Swedish ivy with the polka dot plant. Oh, it's lovely. The polka dot is really nice. Yeah, that came out of the greenhouse. A little bit smaller. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it's. Uh, 
I don't know what this is. Well, this is. So that's in a pot. Yeah, that's in a pot. It's a big pot, maybe. It's a big pot. Yeah. What is this thing? I can't want to pull it. Pull it. it it's a, if you don't like it, it's a I weed. I don't like it. <laughs> if you don't like it. Do you it, have time to walk down? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Now, this is a white pot. I was just storing plants in this. Yeah. You know, we, we don't like white pots, and they're not very earthy in appearance. Yeah, I agree. But it has a, and it does have a piece of that pink w wandering Jew. So it'll probably fill out here soon. Well, yeah, but there's not much sun here, but it's, you know, we, we're tolerating that. And there's more bear diggings there. They cross the property every day, y'all. Oh, they do. Every, night. every single day. And Larry, I saw a deer walk across the front of mine um, from my kitchen window. I think it was Sunday or Monday last. And you know, I don't carry my phone on my body all the time so that I can capture this stuff. But uh, well, I was it's very. Up, I was up top, and we have stakes down at the front where we grow some um, um, pepper plants. Uh -huh. And uh, I didn't plant any this year until much later. But anyway, I, I saw a, a, a turkey. A turkey. And it was a hen because you, then I saw uh, one or two, but she had a total of three chicks. Oh. And I tried to walk down slowly not to frighten her off. I started taking pictures, I, I a video. Uh-huh. Uh, and, you know, I, I tried to zoom it, but she, she you know. Was, I like this pot. I have to move slow. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Otherwise, it's blurry for my for my viewers, and I'm having a really hard time moving that slow. And in the um... oh, you have these. You have two of the of the uh, coleus that we absolutely adore. Yeah, what's the name of this one, honey? I don't know the name of this one. My this one might be dipped in wine, and I don't know what that is. Well, no, no, dipped in wine is over there. Okay, well then. It, Here we go. It's uh, oh, glassworks velvet, stained glassworks velvet. Well, isn't that a good name? Yeah, it's a great. Well, how, how tall is it supposed to grow? It can you tell? Height 24 to 30 inches. Oh, that's brilliant! It's brilliant. I think that's, that's a new one this year, right? We had it last year. We had it last year for it's special to get it. Okay, well, we had the year before we tried to collect, we, we've gotten into coleas. And uh, we saved a whole bunch of different coleas had like 20 plus in the greenhouse, but then we had a, a minus two degrees, you know, on Christmas Eve. Two nights in a row. Well, yeah. And it, was, and it so, stayed cold during the daytime. Well, it killed off 40%, 40, 50% of my New Guineas that I keep in, in the greenhouse. Yeah. But the coleas, a few of them survived, but we lost uh, our, our mother stock. Yeah. Did yeah. you see the, how the wandering Jew just takes root in the rock? Yeah. It, it just pops up. We like it. Well, it's a great, it's a great enhancer, you know, when you do, do a, uh... and of course, uh, this is the trampoline. Uh, the kids are getting older. They didn't come this summer yet, so I haven't, cl I cleaned it off once. But anyway, we've been putting ferns and, uh, we've allowed them to grow. We didn't plant the thing. They yeah, just, well, that's they true. Just, they just, they were volunteers. Just but, but they asked so oh yes you know at some right. point this this membrane's going to rot and we're going to get rid of this thing yeah uh right now it's a memory for all of us so, well the kids uh, over the years have used this thing for hours at a time at least are. twice a day they i mean are. it's really incredible you introduced us to the dipped in wine do you see that one oh there? yes you've got this in the no-no garden oh you've put out mulch Oh, but and that mulch, you put up this beautiful pine bark. Well, and of course, this uh, stone path, uh, which I made 35, 36 years ago by collecting stones out of the creek. And um, it was the first improvement that I made, but it, it, we don't really walk on it much more, but there's a lot of volunteer impatience yeah. in between the rocks. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, you know, you, you couldn't uh, plant those, I'd be, you know, It'd be too tedious, but this time of year it starts. They start having blooms, I know. and uh, it's just gorgeous. Oh, this is beautiful! How it defines the grass and and the tween. This is really lovely, Larry. And you've planted 
These are all you, these New Guinea impatiens that you planted. Yeah, I grew these from cuttings. Uh, we bought some big ones up there that were... Maybe uh, we bought five of the big ones, yeah. but the others are yours. Yeah, yeah. Well, they'll add to our mother stock. Oh. And of course we got flocks. And oh. you have some beautiful flocks in yes. front of your house. I have featured those yesterday. And they haven't gotten mildew on them yet. The leaves are still I clean. Know. Aren't they spectacular? You know, they're they're kind. You have bee balm. Where's the bee balm? You see the darker pink? <sighs> no. Oh, you talking about it through there? Yeah, right there. Huh? Right here. Well, go hold it. Honey. Oh, it's kind of red. Oh, okay. red? Well, I call it dark pink. Okay, all right. That's bee balm. Oh, you got so much grass, too. <laughs> See, there's there's even bear bear digging here. Right. Yes. right. Listen, I I found a place where the, the bear's been digging, trying to dig up one of my coral bells in my garden. Yes, we I've seen that too, PC. I've got to go in and add more dirt. I think that the, with the coral bells, Larry, that they tend to rise out of the ground, so I need to add more dirt to several of those plants. Yeah. Let's see. Here's Silky monitoring us. Isn't it interesting how? Uh, animals take responsibility for keeping an eye on their owners. Well, they think they own us, you know. Joy's mother hated cats. And now that I've gotten older and I don't walk as steady, uh -huh. because they like to follow you around and they kind of, you know, they, they wander around your feet, yeah. they'll trip you up. Yeah, you And so you want to kick them. Yeah. And, um, and of course, you know, but we, we, we marveled the fact that as she got older, we had a cat at the time. She actually, we caught her sleeping with a cat. Oh. And uh, I don't like cats in, sleeping with me. I did when I was a kid. I mean, they'd sleep under the covers, and we thought that was cool. Larry, look at how long. Th these are iris sleeves, aren't they? That no, are, these are, cr this is crosmia. What is crosmia? These leaves? This, this are orange thing. Oh. And that's what those broad leaves are right in yes, there? Yes, they're, 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 they have it kind of passed. It right, but, but the rain it rained and, and they took... And animals have smushed it. Let's get you one up close. It's not... Uh... So the animals have walked through and... and no, this is, this this is, is just... Rain. They just get tall. They get tall. And they, it, there's some blooms here that we could get a close-up of. They actually had these in Hendersonville as in the median. Yeah? Oh, uh, for heaven's sakes. And, and so, but they, they're invasive. Yeah, okay, well. We have found this plant up the hill. And really? We, and we didn't move them up there, that I remember. Do you think the birds, I don't think this one the birds get the seeds invasive. and spread them? I would disagree. Well, did we move these, some of these up there? We moved some up there. Okay, well. Do you see this coil right here? Yeah. Remember, I bought a whole a whole flat of that and was going to put it between the tree tree. Two. Yes, what happened? I can't find it. I don't know where it went. I don't know what. I, I, and I have been all over the garden thinking maybe I planted it and spread it around and had forgotten. Well, I'll be darned if I, I can find it anywhere. Well, and that was kept in the greenhouse over winter. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, so if you buy one of these that's maybe this high in the springtime, it, it doesn't look like that by this time of year. Oh. I mean, it, it came out of the greenhouse quite large. Uh huh. And um, it, but it's in a rail box. Yeah. Now okay. you can't see the rail box. Yeah. Well, that's the joy of what you do with rail boxes. Cause yeah, you, I don't. You I don't have another rail box. Yeah, another rail box. And actually, I I have put more pots in this this space. I see. Look at that. Th this pot, um, it's kind of a fiberglass. Yeah. Mm hmm And. Um, I've often put these in the trailer and moved them somewhere else, uh -huh. but they bounce around. You know, you try to protect them, but I, I've ha had them get crushed, oh. and then I've had to repair them. Yeah. Um, and, and then this over here, this is in a, a stone, uh, stoneware yeah. pot, very okay. heavy, and it uh, came out. I, I, I did not take cuttings off of this of this uh, plant. And so it's it's just you know it's a little leggy. It's, it, well, it's leggy, but it's kind of cool. So Klaus Dalby has an extensive garden and greenhouse in, in in the Scandinavia area. I'm sorry, I can't tell you which country. And he is all about bulbs and all about pots because he can shift things around and keep it looking oh, yeah, good yeah. all the time. He does have 
areas planted up properly, but he's really big about pots. And here you've used them in the garden. He uses them around the doors to things, you know, in the long pathways. Well, in, in this pot here. Look at how huge those. That, that pot was out by your telephone pole out oh, front. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And when we took Carvel to the hospital and I was anxious, I backed into this pot and crushed it. So we repaired it by, uh, it's got a big hole in the back. Yes. We put, uh, so trying to move it a great distance is just too risky. But the, the coleus, you know, they came out a little bit smaller, but I just left it big. Oh, so let me put my hand up here so you can see how big this is. So that's at least four and a half, five inches. Right. Well, and, and, you, and of course the chicken gizzard over here. Oh, I love that's our new, my new favorite in terms of color. So we have about a six month growing season right where, where there's no frost and if we put things out six weeks early there's always a risk they're going to get um frost oh what are these white things invasive something or other okay you can see it, they just keep coming but yeah we just bought a few plants and put back here yeah we transplanted them because where they were they were encroaching and boy oh boy have they taken over the whole back well they've just walked down the hill and that's okay you don't want to well, walk come up close too oh well then we'll have to pull them out after a rain well and there's some crobsmia down in there you can oh. see that, that there's lots oh, of flocks yeah there's flocks well they walk down the hill gravity yeah, 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 yeah. they walk down the hill yeah th those are nice what is this thing right here? It's spent. Well, it's spent. It has yellow flowers and it's, it's bottle locket. It's in the Eligularia family. Eligularia family. We've well, actually, like prize worthy or something. Who's we've got a different Ligularia over that's blooming. Oh, okay. So we have three different varieties. Three different varieties? Yeah, because see how sharp the leaves are there? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this one's. And then those are more rounded. So, what kind of flower does that have? Same, same as this. Okay. And it blooms. It needs probably to be divided again. We have an escort here. Oh, that's incredible. And Larry, did you see the little spotted plant? Yes, I was going to talk about Look, that. Look, the babies. That's I why I wanted PC to come yeah, over we, here. Yeah, we've got to dig those things yeah, up. Yeah, and save these. Because they cost money. Yeah. That's the polka dot plant. Well, that's yeah, right. I, because I had, I had a polka and dot plant. And see that plant. one there? that dropped its seed. Yes, yes, yes. And so so these came up. Yeah, that's something special. I mean, there's... I've never, we've never had that before. Okay, so I have to tell you, the no-no garden, there, the, 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 the um, impatience dropped seeds a good 10 to 12 feet away down into the daylily area. And well, I've also well, had the, coleus the, drop down. The water in there. runs them, you know, when it rains. I know, and carries I know. It's just... It's just incredible. I think their heat, it have to be triggered by a certain amount of heat. Well, here's, here's this this uh, came out of the greenhouse, so I, I didn't touch that. I mean, that coya is not easy, easy to grow. And it's slow, I think, if yes. I remember right. It's a very yes. slow growing one. Well, which for a box, you know, for, for a planter, you don't want something that gets three or four feet tall. No. That's up, you know, foundation plantings. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible, Larry. Well, spread that around. Well, I'm going to put it in pots. Okay. I have, I have planted polka dot pots in pots behind the water feature, and I have pink, white, and red. Yeah. Plus yeah. a red one that I planted in the ground that I wintered over. It's big. It's about two and a half and, feet and tall. Because I, I hurt my oh. shoulders last fall getting these uh, rail boxes out of the greenhouse, I decided to put them close instead of carrying them a great distance. Yes, yes. Uh, instead of carrying them up, uh, it was pure laziness to carry them back upstairs and then put them on the box, you know, the railings on the out, outside uh -huh. of the, the, the dining room area. Well, I just chose not to do that. That's okay. I, even, I talked to Joy about needing help because I, I had... Uh, I had x-rays that showed I had uh, de degenerative joint disease in my shoulders. Oh, for heaven's sakes. And uh, I got a, I got a, okay, talking about flowers, we've got um, the, um, these are uh, oh, hardy begonias. 
all this foliage dies back in the fall, um, but they they come back, and it's got. They're just now starting to bloom. Yeah, they're just now starting to bloom. And it, the older they are, the, the the more tall they will be the next season. Well, yeah, there's some there's some babies over there. We've let them go out in the grass. You know, we can't get grass to grow on this side of the house much. I have rototilled us up so many times trying to get grass. Yeah. But in times past, they've grown out to here. When oh, my were, goodness. Uh, when you were in Florida for that year, they grew out to here. It was just a little path. Yeah. They, they so that's a good eight, eight, that's at least eight feet out from what your current border is. Well, and yeah, you it's know, okay. because we can't grow grass, th th these plants are green, and so... They'll put, they'll put on pink flowers. Yeah. yeah. Makes you happy. Okay, so we're on the um, west side of the house. Well, no, actually the south, south side. Of the south, house. Oh, south side of the yeah. house. So th that's why we have the greenhouse here it was like a lean-to greenhouse because the, the low, once the leaves go down, you have this low winter sun. Yes, you do. Yes, that, yes, that, yes. That comes up in the east and then flows over the end of the house. Yeah. So we're starting to look over um, to the entrance to the house, entrance to the driveway. Right. And it's pretty steep along here. There's a lot of moss in here with the grass. And, and wild strawberry. Oh, it's weedy, weedy stuff, but. Yeah. yeah. With the shade here, that's about all we can grow. Yeah. Well, you know, you do the best you can and you work with nature for crying out loud. Well, for years we didn't have, you know, the disease came over from England and so we couldn't get these uh, uh, impatience and bedding plants. Mm -hmm. And um, and there wasn't enough sun over here to grow New Guineas. No, right. So it was kind of boring for a couple of years. I don't know how many years. Oh, feels like five, five or six. six. Yeah, I was five say. or six years where we didn't have all these impatience. They add so much color to our garden. And look at all the baby impatience coming up. Oh yeah, and they're even out in the grass here. But yeah, they you know. But these now, these these were from, must have been here last year. Well, the, well we planted we plant this one. We planted that one. Yeah. This year. We this year. It. Oh, okay. But all the other little ones are, are, are volunteers, from, volunteers from previous, uh, last year. Oh, I cannot tell you how happy that makes me. There are a lot in the grass. There yeah. There are. Yeah, this whole area here, you can see how it, it blankets. So, uh, probably in another couple of weeks, they'll be well, all up. Right. And of course, the backdrop of ferns. Oh, yes. Uh, I think I think these are sensitive ferns, Joy. Those are sensitive. <laughs> and, and we found those uh, behind a nursing home in Maryland. No, 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 oh. no, no. Oh, we didn't? We got these along the road going out to Birch Mountain. Okay, okay. So on the curve. I need joy, uh, my memory. It's okay. But we I didn't have the name of the ones from Maryland. I haven't. There's a coya back there that's interesting. Is that the fishnet one? Not really. Yes, well, yeah, it's getting covered up. Yeah. See, it's, it is a beautiful coya. And actually, oh, there's some of this stuff. What? This little uh, vining plant with a little yellow flower. Oh, fun. Well, we need to move that out because you can't see it. Yeah, and it needs more sun. Well, yeah. That's interesting. So this is a woodland garden, and as, as beautiful as the garden is, it changes from one hour to the next with the way the sun hits it and highlights things. And Joy loves... Loves to weed. Yeah. She can't walk without weeding. Or picking up sticks. Or picking up sticks, and that's okay. Makes me happy. That's okay. I've decided that if I'm walking people around the garden, I need to start carrying um, something for weeding and something, you know, well, for collecting know. it. Well, I thought I, I've I've dreamed about haven't got it, but get a holster for a for a pruning shear, so I could always have my pruning shear. You know, I've started carrying a pair of scissors. Oh, I know where I can get one for you. Jenny, well, Jenny know. has it's, a connection. Yeah, online. Well, then I'll make a, I'll make a, um, I'll make, I'll make you a gift of that. I'll have to do a little research, but yeah, that's easy to do. You know, I never know what to give you for a gift. Crying out loud. 
And of course we got more kinds of pots. Um, most of these were stored in the greenhouse. And they come out, I don't think we added impatience. I don't know, Joy would tell me. Honey, what? you gotta keep close. Oh, okay. This is part of the story. Okay. This big pot down here. Well, come on. Well, this you're you're in the movies. You got to stay focused. This pot I I took in the greenhouse. Did we add impatience back to it? No, I don't think we added anything. Okay, to that. so those impatience, either it had ones that were still alive. I mean, that's, that's why I put it in the greenhouse. Yeah. Okay. But you see all the all the babies all around the pot. All right. Did we ever decide what this was, Larry? This Joy remembers the name. The uh, the deer have been eating the tops off. The flower has turned to seed. It's the lictrum or meadow rue. Me meadow rue. I can remember. Well, lictrum maybe. Lictrum or meadow rue. Lictrum. Okay. And it, usually it has those little very yes. pink, small pink puff, very delicate at the top. But the deer sure have uh, topped them off. Yeah, well... That's the grassy area is the neighbor's um, yard. And of course we got black-eyed Susan, which is indigenous here. Now there's a baby, baby ligularia. Now, we'll, if we continue today's episode, we'll show you the, the yellow flower the bigger plants have and the okay. butterflies just, it's just starting to bloom. Okay. And of course we got a number of these urns that, that came later with, after the rail boxes. We got these urns, they're, they're uh, interesting shape. Yeah. And a lot of these we put on the back deck so we could see them. Yeah. But we've moved them out. Uh, that one, those flowers, most of them, I think, and it's got some ivy growing in it. And it's got some of this, I don't know, you know this plant. Air plant? What, what do you call it? Well, some, some, I heard somebody refer to it as a spider plant. Or spider plant. I also knew it, I always knew it as an air plant, but that's okay. Well, it's that's okay. What, you know. um, I have a couple of pots that are similar to that, that I painted black, and I was going to do water things in for the um, hummingbirds, and then I realized that was the reason why the, the raccoons started, it's part of their regular routine to check my deck now, because last summer I had, I had a, 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 a little water um, feature. Yeah, with you know, so you could hear the water, and they came up and just totally wrecked it and spread every all the bits and pieces all over the back. But it took me a full year to cognize <laughs> well, you know, that that was what would happen. So I just can't do that. So I had bought two of those pots that are similar into that, and I couldn't decide what to do with them. Well, one of them I've turned upside down, so I could set a plant on top. Right. The small part of it. So yeah, I repurposed it. Well, we got uh, we got up here uh, another urn, and it's got uh, blooming pink uh, hydrangeas. Oh. Uh, we bought that plant well two years ago. It's been in the greenhouse two winters. Wow, and that's so, a beautiful pink. What well, is? And. Uh, I mean, you could leave these outside, but they, they die down. Um, I mean, I, because, because it came in a pot, it didn't come in this urn, but I transplanted it to a pot. And it was on our back porch so we could enjoy it. Yes. And uh, it went in the greenhouse and we brought it back out to the, put it on the deck. But this year I decided to put it out here. Yes. Uh, and, it's, and it's flourishing. Okay, the thing about, the rule about pots is that the plant needs to be able to survive at two zones lower well, than yeah, everything I'll, else. Because the roots are exposed. Yeah, they, they are. They, yeah. So, um, and well, so we got wandering Jew off of it. Yes. And we've got uh, regular impatience in it. They'll start to bloom here soon. Well, they are blooming. Yeah. They've got, got orange and pink. So it's, it's, uh, it's an arrangement. It's going to be absolutely well, it is, spectacular. It's, beautiful. it's probably represents its peak right now. For, for, but uh, the hydrangeas should continue to bloom through the season, shouldn't they? Well, some of them do, depend, yeah. depending on how they're, what brand, what, uh, 
th this is a hydrangea here, but it the, the bloom was blue, but it's gone. Okay. It has that flat look, hydrangea, like that blue one in front of your house. Oh, yes. Okay. I think Silky knocked over the, the bucket over there, honey. It had, it had um, water in it. Water. Oh. Which was going to breed more mosquitoes. Right. Okay. All right. So this empty spot. Yes. For a couple of years, I had, uh, I had uh, Mexican sunflowers in there. Oh, <gasps> the ones that are six, eight, ten to each tall. Uh, yeah, and so the, the, they, I threw some seed in there, but the, you know. Anyway, so they they are, are here. Oh, they they washed down. Well, they washed down, and so I haven't pulled them out. Now, obviously, they like sun. And they're yeah. having to push their way through the azalea, but uh, yeah, that's not good, is it? Well, it's not. Well, I I wanted them in that big spot there because they were taller. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And there's here. Here's one pretty much in full sun. It, so it's going to have a bloom on it. A little bit of interest. Yeah. Um, and of course, this is our our circle of New Guineas here. Uh, this is the I don't know second or third year that I planted New Guineas here. I took a rototiller, and you, you can see the created edge. a soft. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I had to chop through some of the azaleas, but this year I made it. I made it bigger, mm -hmm. um, and to, to rework the soil. Yes. And they finally got enough size that they've got blooms on them. My experience is that the clay soil is about four to five inches deep oh, yeah. because you know below good soil. And it's, uh, but it's because we've added so much mulch over the years that we've created well, yeah, more right. healthy soil. Well, I used your 30 inch auger to, oh. to, to dig the holes. Uh huh. And then I obviously, last year, because I did New Guinea cutting starting in January, I had, by the time they could be planted uh, end of April after, after uh, the last frost, you know, they were about, some of them were. 20 20 some inches long and obviously to plant those at normal level of four inches then you've got this big thing that has to be staked yeah so i dug holes actually did your auger because it's a 30 inch auger um i'd hit stone and sometimes or roots but i dug holes you know that were real deep and put those uh because the roots of those were you know at the bottom of the 20 24 inches yeah and uh, put them deep in the ground. But, well, but these, I, I decided to not start making cuttings. I didn't start making cuttings until sometime in March. Okay, so the thing about um, impatience of New Guinea and is that they will continue to branch out at, at the leaf nodes. Well, you can see them at the bottom there. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm focusing on right oh, now. Yeah. So they can see that they will bush out. Right. They will bush out. Now, so I if did, they get leggy, you know. I didn't plant. Now the, these uh, coleus uh, that were done the previous year in the greenhouse, um, and so they dropped seed. Now they're not very interesting coleus, but I left those there. Yeah. Obviously. Uh, anyway. So, but and you could see I, I did improve the soil. I added uh, potting soil. When I put these in this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. uh, so you've got some of that vermiculite there, yes. that white stuff. Yeah. Well, that all helps, right? Well, right. Yeah, and, and we and I didn't put there were a lot of places. I, I had tried New Guineas last year, but they just never thrived because there wasn't enough sun on this. Impatience side. would probably do all right. Well, yeah, regular impatience. Right would. there, and that. Well, she that joy. bear spot. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. yes. I like the bear spot. She likes the bear spot. Oh. Well, it's nice to have a little bit of negative space every now it and then. It's a place for the eye to rest. Yes. Bless you, Joy. Oh, I was just loving on them. She's, she's <laughs> taking the dead dead blossoms off because yeah. they have shriveled down. They only bloom for one day. Yeah, but they're spectacular. They're about three feet tall, two and a half, three feet tall. Oh, I'd say they're every bit of three. Every bit, yes. Yeah, every bit of three. 
these these are nothing fancy they're just plain i don't know we bought these years ago they're kind of the color of cantaloupe melons exactly that's a good description it's hard to get a good cantaloupe but we yeah, have been is. enjoying the day lilies up the hill yes they have been wonderful so i i did a whole video on those uh-huh i don't know a couple of weeks ago and it's gotten a ton of visits. Has it? Yeah. You know, we're brand new, uh, and I've got like, I'm close to 500 already. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Can we get off of the grass? My shoes are soaked all the way through. Yeah. I did not wear, I well, did not I, put my boots on. I had to change my I walked into the bathroom and took, had taken my shoes off, but my socks were wet. Yeah. And so the, the white rugs have uh, my wet footprints in. Oh, for heaven's sake. Where sex. it's been stained. Yeah. I, tur I turned the rugs over. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, th this is Celosia right here. This oh. is, I think, red, I think it's called red dragon. But anyway, it's got the red, red venation in the leaves. Uh, and it ha it'll have these these uh, uh, plumes will come up bigger. Uh, I think they get I don't know. Anyway, they four or five inches. Right, and and of course they, they they'll come off different little in the nodes. Every every leaf node place. Just well, yeah, about. yeah. Oh, so, that's incredible. So isn't these it? just started to bloom. But anyway, you know when you buy one plant at Lowe's, they want fifteen to twenty dollars for it. But th these are self seeded. Oh. Now they're really close, and um, but I decided to let them grow this way because, you know, in Europe, they use celosia a lot in the formal gardens, mm -hmm. and they'll and I've seen the videos where they're real close like this, mm -hmm. but to buy enough plants to do that. Oh God, yeah. Right, you, can't, you couldn't afford it. And of course, this is uh, Joseph's coat. I grew those from seed last year um it, it's got interesting colors to it um well the foliage is beautiful well yeah you, you buy it for the foliage now you can get they can get pretty tall four or five feet tall so oh that'll help in this area won't it all right and so but you'd consider it a weed in most other instances now this is this is yellow celosia see the the, the venation you don't have any remarkable Mm -hmm. colors in in the leaves themselves but there's lots of um places where flowers are going well to yeah up. we got some coming out right oh. there okay let me pull in so people can see well and and this jacob's joseph's coat got a little more color to it, it each one well each one it's it's there it's named from joseph's coat of, of many colors and so this one here uh jo joseph's coat has got some I don't know, pink and red. It um, looks like that disease people get. Well, yeah, yeah, I understand that. Where the skin loses its pigmentation. Right. <gasps> and here's another red dragon uh, in there. Beautiful, beautiful color on the veins. Right. And there's a bunch of Joseph's coat. Now, I, I had some uh, red petunias left over i put some further up the drive but i i put them down here so i can enjoy them mm -hmm. and of course there's some new gideon patients they haven't started blooming well there's one there's a bright magenta purple one and one the pink one the pink one was it last year they started having these really huge blossoms that are one and a half two inches in diameter well, that's, that's two inches plus yeah and all my hanging baskets have have the big blossoms like that absolutely adore them your red ones yes yeah here's here's a new guinea that's orange oh we have to make sure we keep mother plants for that well yeah well, i did that's what you know that those were made from cuttings yeah it's beautiful absolutely beautiful this is the fishnet i think this is a fishnet kolia i think mm, i don't you don't I think don't so i think that's the name of it okay. but i can't give you a different name it's okay this is what, what is this one you told me this one long ago I've forgotten. Wicked Witch? That's no. it. Wicked Witch. Oh, yes. Everybody loves Wicked Witch. It's so densely bushed. And, and 
because of the light green, it shows up in a shade garden. Well, I saved these cuttings. These are cuttings from uh, last year. And this will year. grow a large, too. Yes. This was the one that was in that pot in your drive okay. for years and right. years. Oh, okay. It grows huge. And the coloration, depending on the age of it, changes. Yes. So Proven Winters has a whole line of coleus that do well in sun and shade. And they can go three, three and a half, four feet tall. Right. And they will continue to bush out from their leaf nodes over the years. We kept one for like four or five years, brought it inside every winter, and it, it just continued to, you know, it grew taller, but it also continued to bush out when it dropped leaves. Well, really I, I've seen online, there's people that use coleus for foundation plantings around their house. Yes. And they just four or five feet high. But anyway, all different kinds of coleus. Oh. And... Uh, well, this is more of the nicotine. We talk about trimming. Uh, I had to break or push them down so because they'd grown up so high, you couldn't see the the the, uh, the number of our house and and they were out in the front here. So it's kind well, of well. We have to take care of our mailman. Well, yeah, you have to clean up. And uh, they were also coming over top of this New Guinea. Oh, for heaven's sake! These nicotina are huge, Larry. Well, yes, they get big. They get really tall. That looks like three to five feet tall. Well, there's one there, right there. I'd say that's five feet. Yeah. yeah. Now it's reaching for the sun. Yeah, well, uh, it's okay. And I've planted some, um, there's dipped in wine yes. and, and two Wicked Witch. This is a, this one's a volunteer from last year, you know, because I had lots of coleus here. Well, I think that's a, that's that giant, like mine at the, at the, at the, well, yeah, they can get big if the insects don't eat Look them Look at up. this huge stand of this, Larry. Yeah, this is uh, autumn sedum. Oh, so y'all, this is this is an example of autumn sedum, and this is mid-thigh high. Oh, um, and there, there, there's buds coming. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know what color, honey. Yeah. What color are the, bu are the buds, the flowers on autumn sedum? Oh, it's, um, they're pink. Okay, pink. Pink. Yeah, um, and the, the the birds like the seeds, you know. Laura and Laura answer. She leaves her sedums because they will tolerate four, five, six inches of snow and not fall. She she because she gets snow in okay. where she lives. Yeah, Joy's favorite color uh, before we were married was pink, and so for for a, for our wedding, I bought her a pink nightgown uh -huh. and a, a pink robe. Oh, sweet. I don't know if I got her pink underwear. I think she had to get that herself. <laughs> you don't wear underwear. She doesn't. Yeah, you oh, you don't, you don't wear underwear, underwear on your <laughs> wedding night. Okay. But anyway, I, I've obviously, pink flowers have a lot of significance for both of us. Oh, that's sweet. Now, you know, sweet. You know she's kept her wedding dress, and I wish she had kept her pink. Uh, oh, it was kind oh, of a, a, it, it just went kaput. It was a velour. And uh, the, the, I'm talking about the, the robe. It had a zipper down the front. Oh. And it was long. Okay. Little thing extra. <laughs> She's the flower of my life, you know. There you go. Okay, so here's an example. We have a shade garden, dappled sun, and you planted a very light colored um, hosta back here. And it shows up. What's the name of that one, honey? It shows up. And you've got some more volunteer uh, uh, black-eyed Susan. black Susans, but see that's an example of of um, using the right shade in in a shade garden to so it shows up. If you put a green one back here, you know it would just disappear. Um, that was a pure accident, and that plant has changed color over the years. That oh. hosta. Well, yeah. I know some hostas change with how much sun they get. True, and the age of them. And the age, okay. Mm -hmm. and, <gasps> yeah. Look at this orange, orange colia. Yeah. yeah, these are real boxes that came out. I haven't, I haven't added stuff this this spring. They had plants. Now they were shorter than that. Yeah. But once they got outside in the sun, uh, and this is. You know, half day, it doesn't, it's not like it's sun all day long. No. Uh, in the afternoon, it gets a lot of sun and, and <gasps> Look heat. Look at this, Larry. 
Yeah, these are, this is echinacea or, or cone flower, purple cone flower. Oh. Yeah, the... Um, People are rediscovering these, I think. Well, they, they've made hybrids. I've got hybrids up in the, uh, in the, in the, um, uh, that come back in the, um, in the heart garden. Ah, okay. <gasps> Look at what we've got here, Larry. How about the astilbe? Yes. The plumes? Yes. Yeah, that's pink astilbe. That's, that's waist high. Yep. Now, see, I've got, I, I need to come down here with some pruning because these, uh, they're falling over your, yeah, your the rail box. Yeah, the blocks are falling over the rail box and, and hiding. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, with a heavy rain last night. They, yeah, they haven't had a chance to pull up. By well, afternoon, they'll sit up straight well, again. Well, no, they're, they're just dangling like yeah. that. Yeah, okay. Oh, I'm amazed that the astilbe are so tall. You know, the, the ones that I bought that have struggled, that I bought bare root five and a half, six years ago, and are just now, you know, the plants themselves are only about three or four inches tall and they actually put on some plumes. They were supposed to be waist high, according to the, the pictures in the catalog. Well, the, 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 these are waist high. I know they are. They're honey, oh, over here. Come here, honey, stop weeding. Okay. We need you. Okay. This is about interest, human interest and flower interest. Give it up. So I just cannot resist put sticks that, and, put and that weeds. Put that of weeds down, please. <laughs> oh, bless her heart. You're, yeah, you're an important part of this because between the two, you remember almost everything, but we need you. So, uh, have the astilbes here been here 20 years plus? Um, they move around. But these right here? Uh, maybe 15. 15, okay. They Let's... walk down the hill and they need to be thinned out and relocated. Yeah. Okay. And this, it's a different type of astilbe. As you see, it's got a furry, furry flower. Yes. Um, and very tall. It's a very um, vigorous type yes. of a stilby. Obviously, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and we've got uh, this leaf is, this leaf right here is columbine. Uh-huh. Now they bloom in the spring, but I, I don't know, I, I don't know if that plant bloomed, but. Uh... And you saw the white nicotina. Oh yes, let me let me capture that. I've captured it up along the road, but let me capture it here. So this is an example of both white and red. I think Larry has some orange nicotina. I, I put some in a pot. I'm trying to get plants close to the house that um, hummingbirds like, you know. Oh, sure. You know, I saw a hummingbird last night go the whole length of my balcony right checking out all of the impatience for for nectar right and of course i don't think there's any nectar in in uh impatience and they uh, were, i've seen you know you wonder yeah they, and they, they go down the throat of this uh nicotina yeah too. no they love the nicotina now the i don't think that the geraniums have have nectar either i don't know people. but i but they're you know, looking for something yeah it was checking them all out Oh. and went straight to the bee bomb and it was a greenish color hummingbird and oh. it kept sucking from the bee bomb but it would be hard to capture. So, and since the theme of today's video was rail boxes. Well it turned out to be everything. Everything. But it's okay. Th this is a rail box and it, you know you have to I didn't add any plants to this. This came out of the greenhouse. Now the impatience were smaller, the ferns were smaller, um, that plant that we th think it's on, on uh, as an air plant, mm -hmm. um, and the wandering Jew, everything was smaller. But these these are shade lo loving plants, and so uh, I didn't want to put those. So this little niche here was perfect for it because it's protected from morning sun. Yes, gets a little bit of afternoon sun, but not enough to uh, bleach it out. Oh, that's great. So y'all, all along this right here are. Um, um, well, this is a variegated Wygelia. Yeah. So it blooms in the spring. Now, behind you is a, a plain Wygelia. 
it has kind of a pink flower. I, I don't, you know, I can't remember. So azaleas, this is all, we've, we've shown you this walkway up the driveway, just brilliant azaleas in the springtime. And in, in this, in this parting of the wygelia and azaleas, there's a, uh, there's a rhododendron. We, we tried to plant more, but, <laughs> we, but that one survived. I mean, it was just a small plant and uh -huh. uh, it actually had blooms. It's had blooms for a while. I mean, this year. Yeah. So it, it's a nice, uh, a nice extra thing there. And over here, I've got, the bloom is at its peak. Uh, Oh yes. These are balsam. And we found these, we didn't find them, but we, when we went traveling to uh, Biltmore Estate, they use balsam. Mm -hmm. um, comes in different colors. I've got some up in the heart garden. Uh, but these dropped the, lots of seed and then so they, they came up there. Uh, I love things that come back. Would you look at the stalks on these things? That's a good inch in diameter. Well, not quite, Pizzi. Not quite. Maybe at the base, okay, at the base. Yeah. You know, right down by the soil, actually, yeah. it's close to an inch. Now, Joy's a quilter, and she can uh, estimate uh, inches better than I oh, can. Oh, you're one digit. Yeah. It's is an inch. Almost anybody's finger. Yeah, that's where the inch came from. Yeah, oh, that, that's okay. true. I have read that on the internet. Wow, well, I guess we're not walking fast enough. Look at the cat. Silky's just going for it. Long, black, all over. Well, and he Here. fights with another male cat. Oh, he's got one. He's well, got yeah, scars. Yeah, he's got, well, yeah, where his, his uh, often we'll find uh, fur on the front porch or fur out the back side door from uh, cats. And the, the cat that he fights with, uh, it just, I mean, I've seen in the last, he's got a long tail, about a foot long, but about five inches of it, it's just bare all the way around. Oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> so it matches the the black and white fur that I have found on the front porch. So my guess is that Silky, Silky's a male, right? Yes, yes. Uh, my, my guess is Silky is the alpha cat because he's he's walking with us, you know. Oh, right, right. Supervising his, and, and, he, and he's probably guarding his territory from the other cat. Well, the other cat actually was the father of the two, we got a, a gray, um, female. Well, it was, it was, it was not a pure Manx. It was a, anyway. Oh, no, 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 no. It was a funny name. Yeah, funny name. Yeah. I can't remember. She was something or other. She had two, two litters. We had lots of cats. So, uh, this is the only one that was long hair. And, uh. He I'm, came from a litter of six. Yeah, and, and on the front, he's got a little white spot. And, and Cookie, the, the female cat, was gray. And it had a white spot. And so, oh. So the two black cats. Uh, white spots on the neck. Right. So okay. I couldn't, I didn't have the heart to get rid of this one. Mm -hmm. Well, he was, he was silky. Yeah, he was it, long, it's beautiful. Long. Yeah, he's like a Persian. And he has green eyes. Now, I, I just, in the last couple of weeks, he had a lot of wads of, 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 of fur back in the back. So I, the rest of them, I, you know, I don't, don't brush them regularly, but I pulled that off. But so, yeah, he's very, uh, but he, yeah, he hasn't been fixed. He's territorial. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. He's, you don't have a problem with moles or, or voles, do you? Yes, we do, but not as bad as we used to. Well, yeah, well, the cats are probably keeping the evidence of the cats digging them up. Yeah, well, that's good. That's good. That's what you call a natural predator. Right. So I love all the ivy that you've got uh, cascading down the hill in front of the house. Yeah, well, that wasn't here when we moved in, and uh, you, you couldn't see up through here. You had uh, to clear out all you the. You couldn't see the house. Couldn't see the house from the from the mailbox. Yeah. But we've added little pieces of ivy. We still have to weed it, but uh, and pick up sticks in it. And keep the um, skirt of the trees cleared. Right. So it doesn't climb up the trees. There are issues. That's right. You have to wear high boots when you do that work. Well, and, and you know, we this bank over here uh, was an ugly clay bank. So we, we put some ivy over here to cover that bank. But, and, and of course, the neighbors defaulted on their house. 
the house was vacant for a couple of years. I would say at least three. Three years. Three plus. And I used to mow all that area over there just to keep it down in their front bank. But it's it's obviously it went up the trees. If you yeah. don't trim it around the trees, it, it goes climbs. up the trees. And I apologize to them uh, when they find when somebody moved in. It's a young couple. They've been there four or five years. But uh, they, they kind of like it. Oh, so you know, they so, don't know better. Well, yeah, it's hard. On, well, I, I don't know. Trees look fine. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm responsible for that. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't want to say that out loud. But that's not, your, that's not your property over there where that tree is. Right? No, where the bank starts. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we had a property dispute with them. We had bought a little triangle down here. A tenth of an acre. Yeah. Yeah, we put that little uh, glass, uh, that's a, a bird bath. That, that goes inside underneath our bed in the wintertime. Oh, bless your heart. Yes. You need to bring clippers if you're going to do that kind of work. Eh, this breaks all right. These are the ones like Pizzi has. Now this is this is fern. We call I don't know Fern Valley. Uh, it, it's Ferndale is 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 in Hollywood next to Griffith Park. Yes. And uh, I'm sure you've been there. Yes. So this is our private, and there's different kinds of uh, ferns down there. Of course, this is Solomon seal here, and it's got little little berries hanging from it. I'm surprised that the the the, the uh, I saw, deer. I saw this yesterday. Hold on, are they gone? No, they're not gone. Here. Here is a great picture, Pizzi, of all the berries hanging down from Solomon's seal. If okay. You come down here. There's a, I don't know, one, two, three, four. Careful you step. I know. Oh, my goodness, that's a spectacular. Aren't they cold? Well, the deer have eaten off some of the leaves. Oh, yeah, I'm surprised they haven't gotten the berries yet. They might be waiting for Now, do these turn color before they drop? They turn a darker blue darker blue oh that's spectacular i need i'm gonna have to come down and take just a snapshot of that so i can put that on youtube and here's another one this one looks good too pizza it has water it looks like it has um, well it still has drops of water. water from last night mm -hmm. oh isn't that fun <laughs> yeah pizza you know I had I spent thousands of dollars on video editing software years ago, but of course it's become obsolete. Oh, but uh, sorry to, to hear that. Well, you know, <laughs> there's free 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 editing software now. Well, I know it's it comes with a well the phone comes with it. Your phone has some supposedly. Yeah, I haven't. Well, I, I know it's it's all time. I um, I did. I did do video editing when I put together this, the uh, DVDs, the 20, the ones that, you know, do an hour and they just keep cycling round and round and round, like you did with your fish um, aquarium. Right. And I would do those of the trips that Sherry well, and I would take. And of course, here's evidence of, of, of hostas that have been eaten by, by deer. Yeah. And, and of course, the stone pathway, I put this in, I don't know, decades ago, but the plants have grown out and up here, there's more evidence of it. So it's another project, either to move the hostas. <laughs> Relocate them. Well, yeah, I know, but that's- These are what... called honey bells. When they bloom, the fragrance is like honeysuckle. Really? Yeah. They're very, very fragrant, honey bells. Okay. It's a very, very prolific, easy growing hosta. Okay, so you know the area to, to the far left of the house, that down that hill that you've planted some azalea plants? Uh -huh. That's a place where we might be able to put in some of these 
make sure we, we maintain the path that you kind of have in mind for that area that winds, you know, snakes down the hill. But there's no reason why, if you want to thin out impatience, I will help come out the and hostas. plant them. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm, yeah, I lose my words. But yes, any kind of hostas, redistribution of assets is my philosophy. Oh, the yes. deer, the deer really ate them down. You can see, you know, evidence of deer, yeah. deer, but they're flushing out with oh, the yeah. rain. As long as they have a good root. Um, oh, these these have been here for years and years. And my experience is that they don't usually, you know, they leave about a two inches if they take it all the way down. And if it has that much green, it's going to be able to pull nutrition up in the plant. Okay. So have we done enough, Larry? We've been do doing this for an hour and a half. Oh my goodness. Well, we can we can look at the other kinds of ligularia up here. Okay, let's now, do that. Now all these down here look like weeds, but this is uh, forget-me-not. Oh. It, it will bloom in the spring and be covered. So we've decided to leave that there Yeah. Uh, instead of picking it out. Now, now, you have to know, like, this is weed. So I, I can pick that out okay. <laughs> and put it on the weed pile there. Um, Gosh, the soil really is nice and wet, isn't it? Yes. We were in bed last night and we heard the rain. And so I, I went outside and uh, well, actually we were watching TV and we heard the rain. It was heavy enough to hear it. Well, you know, I have those Anderson windows in my house and I never hear anything. I, I just never hear anything. Or if, I, if, if it was audible, it just doesn't register. Now, That's also possible. This is this is a petunia. It's cascading. It's bubble gum. That's a proven winner. And it's thriving in in this shady area. Well, yeah, it's 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 gets a little bit of sun, but it's happy. Yeah. Okay. Well, leave it this be. This one's happier. Yeah. This one's got more sun. Okay. So I have to share with you that um, the gardeners uh, in Michigan, they're certified proven winners, and they have a home on the lake in Lake Michigan, and then they their home there in in uh, the middle of Michigan. And they take a plant like this and cut it back, well, cut it back, and within a couple of weeks, it's flushed out really, really thick and all that again. I consider doing that to the one you have on the lower deck at my house. You yeah, know. Now, now Joy's done a good job. Uh, you know, when when I had my stroke last summer. Well, and when I, I was so weak, when I came home, uh, the compression on my weed eater, I couldn't start it. Oh. So we were forced to buy an electric one. Oh. Which is just... Terrible tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, but the, 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 you know, there was, when I was in Florida working on Steve's broken house, I was gone in the summer. Uh-huh. And Joy had to do weed eating. But the weed eater that I had was too big for her, so she got one with a curved, uh, curved. I didn't, I, but I didn't like it. It was lighter. It was supposed to work, but no. Well, it, it's made for flat trimming. It was wasted. Oh. But wasted. you know, a weed eater can be turned on its side, and you can do sure. edging with it. Right, right. And you can surgically get close to things. Yes. Without snipping them. Right. And uh, but here, here we are. She only got this far. The the battery only lasts an hour and a half. Oh, wow. And. Um, I was going this direction when it stopped, right? right yeah, but an door. hour and a half of, of weed eating is long enough, Joy. Absolutely. Do another day. And I came out, I charged up the battery, I weeded for an hour and a half, came out, got started, you know, I just wanted to finish this right through and here. And then I heard a scream. Oh, I screamed loud. <laughs> I, said, I got stung three I thought or four it was a, times by yellow jackets. I thought it was a snake, and then she, oh, no. she came running towards the house, and I immediately, she was reaching for her pants. So I, I said, you got to get inside and get those ants out. No, no, it wasn't but ants. You could, so I you, said, get them, get them, get them, because they were chasing me. Yeah. She, she got stung three times. Or four. It hurts. Was, it, was the nest in the ground? Well, we'll show you. <laughs> we won't get that close. <laughs> I came out armed with uh, spray. Good. It'll go 10 or 12 feet um, to spray them from a distance. So uh, they had built their nest down in the niche. It was, 
Oh, well, maybe it was this one. I think they're down. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, they're coming out of a hole right there. They're still, uh, they're still alive. I've got to, I, I couldn't get close enough to see the hole. Oh, I can see the hole. Let yeah. me, let me pull it in on the camera. You can see them coming and going. Yep. Are they coming out? Yep. So those are one of the hazards. I mean, they, they can build a nest in a hole in your yard. Yeah. And you're mowing grass. Where's and all of a sudden hole? you get stung. Oh, they're kind of in between and below the, the greenery there. Oh, yeah. I see them going in. Yeah, big time. I'll, so when you leave, Pizzi, I'll come out and spray the stuff right down the <coughs> hole. Yeah. You've got to. Yeah, they have to find a better home. So, oh, Wasp, you're welcome to go find a better home now before this one gets destroyed, okay? We need you in the garden, but we don't need you right there. So, Pete, on, on the left is Ligularia, but the, it hasn't got a bloom on it. But we're going to see, got some blooms look up there. Look at the blooms up here. I know. We're going to go. The that's, grass. that's why we brought her over here, honey. Oh, my goodness. Look at the grass. Yeah, you know. Wow. Oh, oh, this is far Solomon seal, PT. Do you see, you see the blossom, do you see the berries on the far Solomon yeah. seal? Isn't that cool? Fall Solomon seal has the, the berries on the end of the, of the frond rather than hanging down below. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm learning. Well, if we can walk up through here, PT, th this is the, the yellow head. <sighs> And butterflies love these things. Uh, well, I've got a, another a bloom over there. Now, I'm not walking up any further. I didn't put my boots on today, and I'm real sorry about that. Well, I'm going to break off a piece, and I'll bring it to you. Because I've done a close-up, but it doesn't do it justice. Well, I know. Thank you. Oh, lots of dense color, and it looks good from a distance as well as up close. Right. Well, we have to have color whenever we can get it. Well, yeah. That's lovely. Right. Thank you, Mary. Oh. Are these all baby impatience in through here, Larry? On the path? No, no, that's a weed. Those are weeds, okay. Yeah, we call that devil plant. Oh. We've tried to find out from people what it really is and well we could we could use the, the Google thing to do a search on it. I have one. a plant I have a plant app. I don't use it very often. Well, you could just uh, Google uh -huh. and uh it'll, it'll, it comes up with a little square camera thing and they'll, yeah. they'll do a search our escort our security guard <laughs> okay is there anything else we can we need to see in the next four or five minutes we're already in an hour and 32 minutes well, walk up this way this is you know this is a nice uh hosta that's by itself yes and, plus it's got flowers and and the hummingbirds love that Now this is what's left of the uh, blooms in the spring, the uh, hardy. Woodland poppy, woodland it's not poppy. hardy, it's called woodland poppy. Yeah, it looks pretty scrappy this time of year. It needs to be weed eaten. Oh yeah, now. see, to hand weed this is a nightmare. We have a variety of ferns through here. Oh, I should step back so you can get a little clearer picture. We're walking up along the ravine. And you're walking under a, uh, a purple, purple magnolia. Mm -hmm. Honey, we need you up here. Purple magnolia, you think? I saw the flowers on this just a couple of weeks ago. I know, it blooms again a little bit in the summer. There's one, one bloom up top. Uh, honey? Tulip magnolia. Tulip magnolia. Oh. Well, it's lovely. Well, it is. In the early spring, it has blooms spread over it, but yeah. And of course, the bridge, we added some real boxes. Yeah. 
this this episode starts with rail boxes and so i decided we, we f discovered these these uh, bubble gum by proven winners and i said man that'd be a perfect thing to drape over a rail and and you know they do well here well yes they, they do. get just enough sun to do really 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 well well i have i have uh lilies down in the pond yeah i see those but they haven't put out a bloom it, there's just not enough sun here for them for a water lily yeah huh. and we got creeping jenny here this is a flat kind yep oh and we can walk up this way okay now this used to have, no, this was just weeds and, and trees and when I, I remember weed eating when the weeds were just about chin level. Oh, for heaven's sakes. And so it took a, a big job to weed through this thing with a weed eater. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Now Do you see a, all the dew on the grass, you all? Yeah. My shoes are soaking wet. Well, mine are too. I just, I always wear my, my big boots when I come out in the garden and I didn't today for some silly reason. Well, it won't kill you, but... No. Unless you... another bubble gum. Oh. This one gets a lot more sun. Well, and of course, and you have to, you know, water it and feed it. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, there. <clears throat> Over here we've got... Uh... Typically, dahlias, you have to dig them up in the fall. Yeah. And uh, in Georgia, the winters were more milder, and they would live. I'm too lazy to dig things up in the fall, any great. I, I do a lot of digging, but. Yeah. So we, we found this at uh, Ingalls. And there's another one back there, but it's been covered up by this uh, salvia. It's called black and blue. You could, there's a few blossoms up top. Look at how tall it is. Well, yeah, it's gotten awfully tall. And well, and here, here's some pink balsam. Comes in different colors. I'm uh, glad you have it. I've been thinking I needed to add that to the garden somewhere. Well, so, Larry, you, you, in terms of your dahlias, yeah, there are people in the country who are in in the winter time. Yeah. They 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 add maybe three, four, five inches of of. Uh, soil or or mulch over them well, there, and they come back i know and there's a lot of things I, i've read about that pizzi but, but that did it on its own without you having to do well, that right and and uh here's another dahlia i grew that one from seed that one, that one's got a bud down there and um uh, and then there, there's another dahlia down here I oh mean, this is this is just like that one up here. This dark foliage is magnificent. Well, yeah, but, but it has, but it doesn't have much sun. Well, we'll but, have to move it, won't we? Yeah, well, I've got poppies here. And then you can see a hybrid coneflower up there. It's orange. Okay, just a second. Let's get up there. The orange flower. Oh. That's a hybrid coneflower. Now, that this is the second or third year. Hybrids, um, they look great when you buy them. But they often go back to the the uh, plain purple. But these have maintained their color. And then this is pink. It's not purple. You know, mm -hmm. we've, we've got a big uh, bed of purple uh, coneflower, but they, these were hybrids, so they were more expensive. And I'm pleased that they've come back and they've, they've gotten Maintained bigger. their color. Well, yeah. I see the, the bumblebees, the, the honeybees, oh, yeah. are just swarming over them like crazy. Okay. Yeah, this is our heart bed. Just a minute, I have to step down. Things are very steep here, y'all. <laughs> yes. And well, he, he's I, made steps for us with these well, yeah, you know, rounds. We, we had dead trees, and uh, I, I turned these into eight inch thick, like big coins, and use them for steps to define the heart bed. Yeah, okay, I'm coming. I have to keep my eyes on my where my feet are going. Right. Okay, which is the heart bed, Larry? Well, this is, when you look at it from, from, from this angle. 
Oh, uh, I see. Around and I, I made it go in over there. So, you know, if you saw it from above, it, but I put the, put the, uh, the round, I call them rounds, uh -huh. down that mimic that shape. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Now, obviously, we haven't kept up with weeding. Well, you know, it's just ridiculous. What was the name again of this purple thing over here? Balsam. Balsam. Yeah, and we got some butterfly weed. We first discovered this in Georgia. Tried to dig it up and transplant it, but it never, it never took. But um, I got one of those boxes with, uh, with all these seeds and vermiculite. Uh -huh. And I used that first in this heart bed. Uh -huh. And they're flowers. But a, a lot of them, well, when they take over, it's, it's like you see, that's, that's a weed. Yeah. Quite nice. Anyway, and, and these are, I trimmed these with a with the weed eater the other day. I, I just don't have the time. I, I'll come out here later, but I've got to come out here with the snippers and take these these stalks down yes. below this new growth. Uh -huh. Okay. And this plant is? That, that's that's a, um, a, a uh, lupine. Lupine, oh. Yeah, the lupine. I have, your lupines were spectacular. Oh, yes, they year. were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spectacular. They were very nice this year, the lupines. They were brilliant. I agree a thousand percent. Yeah, and here's a red dragon, Celosia. And that one walked. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that planted itself. I mean, it grew itself. Because you had a whole bed yeah, of them here. Last year, this was all it, uh, covered with a volunteer of uh, Celosia. Mm-hmm. And this year, it just has clumps. You know, I I, I actually collected Celosia seed last fall, but I I haven't planted any. Yeah, well, you know. We just don't get around at all. Life happens. Well, and we didn't plant this this year. Usually, I put New Guineas in here. I just we decided not to do it. I and told you this. You know what I want? Here. Snapdragons. Yeah, but my goodness, they look like they die. Well, at this time of year, they look ratty. Okay. Um. But Liz, the gal that takes care of Carvel, she planted some uh, little um, marigold seeds. And they were, you know, <laughs> so uh, last last Friday, she had, I was painting the deck. She said, where can I plant these? I said, well, marigolds need a sunny location. And because this, this was a mulched bed, uh -huh. it really didn't have any weeds in it. Okay. So pretty much. I've been weeding. Well, yeah, I've been weeding it too, honey, but it's, it was pretty clean. And so uh, she planted 32 plants. And I told her, I said, and because they're so fragile uh, when they're this small, yeah. um, I said, you know, I'm going to water them so she doesn't work the weekend. So mm -hmm. I came out here at 6 a.m. Saturday, and the bear had dug up. Yeah, I see the bear, the bear digging. Dug them all up, except... Maybe one, two, three, four, five, five. Yeah, five plants survived out of 32. Yeah. This is an incredible yes, day, is. Lily. We got a package coming. Okay, I think we need to call us quits. Okay. This has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much, Larry and Joy, for walking us through the lower garden. Um, yeah, it's 1121. Oh, I need to be scooting here pretty soon. Wow. Well, we came out in the sun, and all of a sudden, I'm a very damp girl. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and take another shower well, before I... give you the sniff test. Oh. I'll, I'll let you take the... My hands are... Okay. Thank you very much. And I appreciate it. And be wet. I know. I still got thank, my glasses. Thank you very much, you all, for coming and sharing our garden with us this morning. Thank you.